We are pleased to present from St. Marguerite Bourgeois Parish in Sydney, Mass for Shut-Ins. Good morning and welcome to Mass for Shut-Ins on this third Sunday of Advent. We light the third candle, a sign of joy, as we prepare for the celebration of the birth of Christ. I need to remind you that next week, same time, same channel, CTV 2, 10 a.m. But today we welcome Father Damien McPherson, who is a Franciscan Friar of the Atonement, who is visiting with his family in New Waterford. We welcome him and we welcome the Glace Bay St. Vincent de Paul Society. I invite them now to lead us in Mass for shut-ins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. To prepare ourselves now to celebrate the Eucharist, indeed to be nourished once again by the gift of God's Word and His Sacrament, we pause and place ourselves in God's presence, conscious again of our need of God's grace and His mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you send us your Spirit and call us to holiness, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, on the last day, you will present us to the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the caucus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be open and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Sion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. To you, I lift my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Lord. 
Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in truth and teach me. For you are my God and Savior. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Remember your mercy, Lord, and the love you have shown from of old. In your love, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. To you, I lift my soul. A reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient, strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Brothers and sisters, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers and sisters, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When John the Baptist heard in prison about the deeds of Christ, he sent word to his disciples who said to Jesus, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you have heard and see. See the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? And then did you go out, what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, the, the, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written. I, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Today I tell you, among those born of woman, no one has risen greater than the John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, I want to tell you I'm delighted to be here. My first experience of celebrating the TV Mass here in uh, Sydney. As I thought about the readings today, what occurred to me was that, you know, my sister, Joan, is a catechist. And a catechist is, is one who teaches the faith. 
And uh, she's a catechist at St. Leonard's Parish in New Waterford. And presently, she is teaching the grade one class in their preparation for receiving First Holy Communion. It's really a sacred duty. As might be expected, the sessions are focused on the significance of Advent and the coming of the Magi. To be sure, for the majority of those innocent children, Advent is a new word in their vocabulary. And let's face it, let's face it, especially at this time of year when the church calls our attention to the themes of joy-filled expectation, hope, anticipation, these same themes in the minds of children are much less focused on the coming of the Magi and more focused on, you guessed it, Santa Claus, of course. Focused on Santa Claus. Uh, for, the, for the mature-minded catechists, while they, while they put forward their best effort, they ultimately depend upon the ongoing work of the parents and the grace of God in order to really bring about the initial understanding of actually what is taking place in their preparation. Uh, while the exchange of gift giving is very much a part of this season, and as difficult as it is to keep the minds of children focused on the gifts of the birth of Jesus, you will agree, I know you will agree, uh, it's even more difficult at times to keep the adult mind focused on the joy-filled mystery of the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. Yes, 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 keeping Christ in Christmas is what it's all about. I do believe that the community most anxious, even privileged, to embrace the fullness of the meaning of Advent, however, is the sick. The sick, the elderly, the shut-ins, and those in long-term care facilities. Much of their time is Advent time. They live and long for the Advent themes of hope, expectation, and anticipation as they meet the challenge of their daily lives. Especially during this Advent season, they are true and fitting disciples who even hunger, hunger and thirst more and more to be embraced by the mystery of Bethlehem as they live their lives one day at a time. Today I'm reminded of those words of Isaiah when he says, be strong, be strong, and fear not. On this third Sunday of Advent, I do believe, I do believe it's fitting, it's truly fitting to appeal to the seasoned prayer of all our shut-ins and inviting their prayer, especially for the little ones who are themselves preparing for their First Holy Communion as well, as well as their prayers are requested for the entire faith community. You have the time in your place and in your space, and it's holy time. It's not accidental time. It's real time. It's Advent time. You are participating. You are anticipating other things in your life, and those who love you and care for you want to make sure that that indeed does happen throughout this Advent season. And so as we go forward in faith and confidence, we ask God through the gift of his spirit to be present to the sick, to the suffering, to the shut-ins, to those at home, and indeed to the whole faith community, as once again we gather to keep Christ in Christmas and once again celebrate his coming. For that grace, for that gift, for that power in the word of God and in his sacrament, we give the Lord thanks today and we give him praise. Let us now profess our faith in the Lord. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
on the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God our Father, it is with faith and with confidence now that we come before you and present to you these our petitions in prayer. We pray for our church and for all those who minister the gospel to others, especially the most vulnerable. May we all continue to grow in our faith and help spread the gospel and the good news throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the needs of our world, for those who go without, for those whose most basic needs go unmet. We pray that people would share their resources and give of themselves so that we might live in a more equitable world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the Society of St. Vincent de Paul that we may continue to serve those in our community who are in need of assistance. We pray that we can continue our ministry of responding in a Christ-like way, in generosity and love. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick and the shut-ins, that you will feel, feel the presence of God and know that you are valued and loved. We pray for all those who ask for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. God, our Father, with faith and confidence, we give you praise and thanks and ask your blessing upon these, our petitions, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Amen. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, we, we ask you to receive us, our hearts may be accepted to you, O Lord, and may be our sacrifice, your sight this day, be pleasing to you. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. My friends, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly and powerfully accomplish for us the saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, uh, for uh, it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so filled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, 
and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name. are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with our Bishop Fitzpatrick and our, uh, with, uh, Francis, our Pope, our local bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your mercy. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always freed from sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer now to one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to life everlasting. May the blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. My Jesus, I love you and I long to receive you sacramentally. I embrace your presence within me and I unite myself in gratitude that you are abiding in me and I in you. I pray for the grace to go forth with your spirit of peace and healing to meet the needs of this day. Come thou wisdom from on high Who orders all things mightily To us the path of knowledge show And teach us in her ways to go Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel Shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O come, thou Lord of might, who to thy tribes on Sinai's height in ancient times did give the in cloud and majesty and awe. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to you, O Israel. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's Nativity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God be upon you in full measure, pressed down, shaken together, and flowing over the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Awake, awake, and greet the new morn, for angels herald its dawning. Sing out your joy for soon.